Hello, lovelies. Isn't being horny or turned on or aroused one of the best feelings in the world? (laughs) We all experience it. We all enjoy it. And we can all even pretty much tell when somebody walks into a room that is feeling that way, particularly if you're attracted to them. If there's somebody that you're attracted to and they walk into the room, then it's like the air in the room gets thicker, like honey between the two of you. But what if you could see the energies? What if you could see what it looks like to a psychic? Well, the amazing Ingo Swan was able to, and the picture he paints is absolutely fantastic. For those of you who might not have heard of Ingo, he was an acclaimed psychic, remote viewer, and co-creator of the Stargate Project, a secret U.S. Army unit established in the 70s for the investigation of potential psychic phenomena in military and domestic intelligence applications. I'm going to read you a little bit from his book, Psychic Sexuality, not only because it is astounding, but also because if you know more about your invisible anatomy, the one that is denied by our materialistic prison paradigm, of course, you can use it. First of all, you can observe it, but (laughs) it's not like looking at your phone while you're having sex, I can tell you that much, but one of the things that actually makes sex really fun is to observe your energies. And so now that you know that you have this energetic regalia, it's really fun to put your consciousness inside your body and actually notice the energies forming this gorgeous erotic garment for you. So that's the first thing that's super fun to do. And the second thing that's super fun to do is use your imagination to build it and use your imagination to play with these things so that if there is like a super hot dude in the room that you would like to reach out to, then you know you have these super powered nipple extenders (laughs) and you can just activate them and send them out into the room, right? I mean, like... (laughs) Talk about having an advantage over the other ladies in the room. So pay close attention, please, ladies. Uh, This is going to uh, make things really, really fun for you. So I'm going to start off by reading what I think is one of the most fantastic, all fantastical, really, chapters in a book that I have ever read. Here we go. Here is Ingo. In the case of the bio-female version, which is undergoing a horny cycle, the shoulders, upper arms, and back first become slightly illuminated, the color at first usually being an off-white or a slightly light pinkish one. This preliminary arousal doesn't necessarily correspond to the female's ovulating cycle, and in fact often occurs after menstrual cycles have ceased altogether, often more profoundly so. This preparatory illuminating might last for about two days, after which wings begin sprouting upward from the breasts, shoulders, and upper back. These now begin to take on a slightly undulating light bluish hue, which is transparent, but somewhat veined as in butterfly wings. Shortly thereafter, the wings begin cascading energies upwards, often turning slightly golden at the tops of these undulating fountains. I am almost embarrassed to say it because it's almost too incredible, but these fountains of upward moving light can extend up to 20 feet above the female's shoulders that these sexualizing energy phenomena should be called regalia is now perfectly understandable. At this point in the developing phenomena, the fountains spread out and begin to emit points of light which are always scintillating white and which begin drifting downwards, somewhat like sparkling dew. 
Meanwhile, the breasts have become increasingly sensate, almost to a state of painful thrill. Something akin to pink rose blossom auras have developed with the nipples at the center and which by now are at least somewhat blood engorged. Further down, the red chakra in the crotch has expanded considerably and can ultimately envelop the entire pelvic area. Also, the small green chakra just above the clitoris has begun emitting a bright yellowish green ray or beam which is bendable and projectable and which snakes out frontward as if trying to locate a contact. Meanwhile, the collections of the tiny white chakras comprising the erogenous zones have increased in luminosity and thus in erotic sensitivity. The female may now rub just about anywhere and experience various kinds of ecstasy. But now, an even more amazing phenomenon occurs. From the pores of the skin begin to emerge microscopic liquid-like globules of white light energy. These emerge from most pores in a stream at about five seconds apart, insofar as I've been able to time them with a stopwatch. But there are thousands of pores on the skin, and so if microclairvoyance is not employed, the whole of these floating globules will appear as a field or a mist of white light. Along with these liquid-like globules, a peculiar odor or fragrance now develops. It's often physically tangible. To my nose, it is slightly musky and damp. This fragrance appears to be easily identifiable to male versions who wander too near. Other female versions will notice it too and comprehend that the female has gone into heat. The fragrance is effective, at least across a diameter of 30 feet. Depending on air movements and directions, it will easily fill an average room. The sparking bits of light drifting downward and the globules emanating widely now fall on everything within proximity. Most male versions who wander into the perimeter now don't stand a chance. Whether young or mature, fat, thin or otherwise, the female now suited out in this astounding and exceedingly beautiful and intensely sexualizing regalia, well, most males will find themselves disturbed, even though the uninitiated among them might not have a visible clue as to why. It would appear that other sensitive female versions know exactly what is taking place especially married ones who might hasten to get their husbands and even their sons away and certainly their boyfriends. Nonetheless, most male versions, apparently of any age, will find the means to get nearer the female version, who now has only to select from among the many who are presenting themselves. However, in astonishing surprise to clairvoyant seeing, the female version now becomes remarkably selective. The greenish snaking ray or beam energetically extending outward from just above the clitoris will now be seen plunging into the bodies of the male versions. If this blending meme doesn't like what it sees, it is quickly withdrawn and plunges into another male version. The whole of this takes place in an instant so fast that I have not developed micro-clairvoyance in sufficiently speedy accuracy to perceive what happens at this point. However, the moment of the plunging and the withdrawing suffices to leave the targeted male version somewhat temporarily dazed. The pupils of their eyes will widen, however bright the light is otherwise. Usually, they have to grab hold of something long enough to recover some semblance of composure. When and if the undulating green beam seems to find what it's looking for, it then proceeds to wrap its flagellating end in convulsions around the testicles of the selectee, also interpenetrating the red chakra between the scrotum and the rectum. 
The snaking beam now contracts along its entire length, and the male version involuntarily moves very close to the female version. The pores of the male version will now begin to emit an oily substance, usually in the color of dark yellow amber. He may also begin to sweat more than usual, and his tongue and throat will become dry. However, I've seen female versions reject all the males in the perimeter, after which the female version shortly leaves, apparently to pursue other locales. If a selection has taken place, few social or moral issues now apply, and ways and means will be devised about how to get around them. Almost assuredly, the anticipated full intimacies will take place in the nearest closet, bathroom, or parked car, or in more permissive environments right in view of everyone else. The selected male version will be rendered rather witless, except under the most extraordinary circumstances, clairvoyantly seen even without microclairvoyance. The reasons are perfectly obvious. The moment the male's version's balls are under grapple, excepting the greenish snake, the female version instantly ceases producing all of the regalia above, like a switch has been thrown. Now from the top of her skull rise a whole flock of the most amazing, limpid, liquid green rays. These are entirely extendable and bendable, and they reach out and wrap the entire body of the selected male version in them. Likewise, apparently to make sure of matters, the two rose blossom auras of the nipples now produce equally extendable beams, which, with strong magnetic force, wrap around the torso of the selected male. Indeed, as soon as the couple is in a suitable place to commence the physical part of all of this, the male version almost invariably will rip off the upper garments of the female version and with mouth will go for the rose flower auras of the nipples. The clairvoyantly seen green rayed regalia headdress of the female version is entirely compatible with the myth of Medusa and the crown of snakes growing out of this terrible goddess's head. Medusa turns males to stone, which is about the same as saying turning them senseless. In conventional sexology terms, the whole of what has been described above is referred to as the seduction of males by females, or the female conquest. This, it would seem, is somewhat of an understatement. Fortunately, the energy bodies of a good number of female versions are not entirely proficient in manifesting the full regalia. Even so, if they are proficient... Even two of them in one room or at a cocktail party can arouse considerable consternation and wreck the otherwise peaceful activities of others in the near vicinity. Additionally, males that have been probed and rejected will thereafter pine away for a long time. So indelibly has the probing been recorded in the sensorium. I've not yet seen a male version who is completely immune to all of this. Isn't that something else? <laughs> and it's not as if you haven't seen these exact dynamics occur, occur at a party or in a cocktail bar. It's not as if you have not experienced them yourself. Sometimes when the mood strikes... I thought that was just an absolutely fabulous description of what occurs, and my imagination couldn't even imagine half of what <laughs> Ingo describes. However, I can let you know I'm going to start working on it right away. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will have the male side of this coming very shortly.